supercar stuff at now pre-owned values I would say pretty acceptable
yeah. Acceleration, mind-bending, throttle response for a heavily turbocharged car. They have to work a magic on the way that this thing spools up. There's a tiny bit of lag at lower speeds, but once you're on it, once it starts to flow, turbo lag in this generation is just a thing of the past. The way that this thing develops momentum is borderline illegal. I mean, you should really have to go for some sort of secondary performance car license before you get into this thing. I always imagine, imagine if you just one day decided to get into a supercar for the first time and you got into a 720S. I think you might end up through the hedge. Such is the diaphragm bending acceleration of this car. I remember when I first drove the 720S on the launch back in Italy all those years ago. One of the quotes which has been uh, sent to me a few times online is, if this thing had wings, it would fly. And at the time it sounded a little bit of an exaggeration, but being behind the wheel of this thing now, I stand by it. It feels every bit as fast as it did then, as it does right now. It is a game changer for the area of the market that this thing sits in. And going once again back to the low mileage sort of pre-owned values, you're not going faster. It's just absurd. Now today we find ourselves up in the Scottish Highlands, girting the locks, and there is some temperature in this tarmac. Now we have fitted uh, our first upgrade on this car, which is the Boston wheels, 20s at the front, 21 inches at the rear, and we've shot them with a Michelin PS4S tire. <laughs> Just the grip levels are astounding. But you get some temperature into it, combined with these brakes, and this is where it all comes together. You see, there's one thing having diaphragm squashing acceleration, but you've gotta have the confidence to back it up. Confidence comes through braking. We've got these remarkable carbon ceramic brakes on, on this thing with active aero. When you slam on the brakes like so, <laughs> in the rear view mirror here, you see that massive wing deploy, adding aero drag, adding friction to the air around it, contributing to deceleration. And on top of that, the car weighs just over 1,400 kilograms. So when you add all of this up, the performance, the power to weight ratio, the stopping ability connected to a twin clutch gearbox that seems to shift telepathically. It almost feels like it's completed its cog initiation before you've pulled the bloody lever. It just goes in, listen to this. just remarkable. And then we have what is arguably the most unique attribute of the 720S. Perhaps it's defining USP, which is its broad spectrum of ability. You see, right now I'm on one of the finest driving roads I've had the fortune to be on in quite some time, and it would pick it apart with ninja-like precision. However, you can then put this thing into complete automatic. So if I deactivate active here on the drive select switch. The whole car goes into active, it goes into comfort mode, and the eagle eyed of you may have noticed that I have a couple of jackets strapped down underneath a wonderful Alcantara brace back there on the parcel shelf. Truly, in this mode, it is one of the most sublime grand touring experiences. One of the reasons for that is the chassis composure. It does a phenomenal job of lining out creases and bumps in the road. However, the visibility, the amount of glass in this car, and they developed such a unique feature on, I guess you would class it as the B pillar of this car. They've split it in half and filled it with glass. You feel like you are in a V8 propelled goldfish bowl, such as the visibility. And when you slow it all down and you want to take in the environment that I am so ridiculously blessed to find myself in right now, the immersion in your surroundings, it's just something to behold. Tie that together with the effortless amount of torque this car has, and this is where it really adds up to one of the more unique daily drive experiences. Because the car is so light and the car has so much torque, it just effortlessly rides along on it. And the torque underneath your right foot, underneath that throttle pedal, it feels physical. It's a tangible, malleable ball of energy that sits underneath your right foot. And as you're going along, you just need to breeze along or gracefully overtake something that might also be enjoying the surroundings that we're all sharing up here. It just puts a grin on your face, weirdly, going slowly, despite the fact that this thing is designed to go so fast.
Now then, steering feel, steering weight. Uh, this was one of the standout cars when it launched, and honestly still is, because McLaren, even up until now, have done a very good job of holding on to a hydraulic steering rack. Now, the majority of the performance car world has sort of been forced into using a electronically assisted steering rack, which is infamous for numbing out some of the dexterity and steering feel from the car. But this car maintained a hydraulic rack. It's just holding on to just a smidge of the old school, despite the fact that this thing is a tech tour de force. And what that feels like is just a weight and a chassis loading that you could really lean on. So yes, that's the immediate feeling of this car. Sheer breathtaking performance. In fact, now I'm behind the wheel, I'm sort of questioning my sanity of even contemplating increasing the horsepower on this car. You definitely do not step out of this thing and go, do you know what this needs? More power. That's not something that enters your mind. But such is the way of the project car that we're going there. Um, but not just that, we're gonna do some aesthetic upgrades as well. Um, and we're not just talking stickers here. We've, yeah, we've got some big stuff lined up. And the exhaust, a work of art, it is absolutely stunning. So there we have it. <laughs> Honestly, acceleration is... It's actually hard to get your head around just how fast this thing is. Anyway, there we have it. Um, I can't believe we've got a 720S finally in the garage. It's been a long time coming. Um, speculatively, uh, thought we were going to have one around about 2018, if I'm honest. But as I mentioned, didn't quite work out. But now it's here. But I'm really glad that we waited because the chances are I wouldn't have turned it into a project car back then. And I think this really uh, forms the announcement of a project car series. Now let us know in the comments below. We always listen to what you would like to see from the channel. This is a relatively new series where we get to fondle with a car that arguably shouldn't be fondled with, but isn't that the excitement? Isn't that the uncharted territory we're heading in? Let me know in the comments below what sort of things would you like to see from this project car. There are a couple more being added to the channel. We've speculated on uh, doing things to, to the manual DBS and uh, quite likely as well to uh, my 991 manual GT3 because it's just clicked over 41,000 miles and maybe that also might want a bit of a refresh, some sort of facelift aesthetically or something like that. So comments below, welcome to the Project Car series. And uh, if you haven't already, head back and check out the videos over the, the last few weeks. We've introduced four new cars. That's four walk and talks, four first drives, punctuated by some other really special stuff. Oh, and watch out for the Yaris first drive. It's, it's what that car deserved. We managed to find Yaris country, which is one of the environments which I think uh, that thing really justified to make it work. As always, thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Ciao. I'm so sorry to hear that you crashed falling alone now. Do you believe in this thing? Cause I'm bigger than you are. Cause I'm bigger than you. Until you raise your